Hey, hello guys, this is Kathik from exudeautomation.com and this is part 3 of our Appium with c -sharp video series. And in this part, we are going to start discussing about locating elements in Appium. And this part is split into two parts, one is part A and one other one is part B. So in this part, we are going to discuss some of the object identification properties like ID. And in the next part, we'll discuss some of the other identification properties which we can use to identify the controls in Android's application under test. Right? So Appium locators. As we all know that Appium has extended Selenium WebDriver's API, the locators in Appium is much like Selenium with some additional methods to identify the elements. And the most awesome part of the Appium is the same method works for native hybrid web application as well. So I mean most of them again because it's not always the same. So some of the methods will change for web and the same method will change for native as well. So the different Appium locators which a native application property we can identify or by using its accessibility ID uh, and the same is called as name property which does the same job really and the tag name which is replaced by a class name and class name should be specified as a fully qualified name like this android.widget.button and that's how you should specify the class name and also you can identify the control using xpath so these are the different kinds of uh, locating an element uh, using Appium in your Android application, right? And uh, we can also discuss some other uh, identification properties as well. And as you can see in the screenshot below, you can see that the find by accessibility ID, there is a method. Similarly, there is a method called find by class name, CSS selector, ID, link text, etc. So these are some of the other identification properties, but it changes based upon the type of application that you're working. For native, you don't have to deal with link text or partial link text or tag name, etc. Or CSS selector, etc. Uh, but for web application, we will be dealing with this link text, partial link text and CSS selector, etc. Right. So again, as I already said, based upon the application type, the identification properties changes. So locating element with ID. So let's not waste our time and see them in action. So for that, I'm going to flip to Visual Studio. So this is the same project which we worked in the last video of a lead. So this is the same project which we worked in our last video of this video series. And here we are actually going to locate the element using ID. And we are going to take our same calculator application which we developed in Robotium video series of our Execute Automation channel. So the same application we have already discussed in our Appium with Java video series as well. So please go back to that video to watch how we automated the calculator application in Java. And same thing we are going to work in C Sharp as well. So there is no difference in the application object identification. But for the sake of time, I have already opened the emulator and we have already have this calculator application installed and to identify the controls properties in Android emulator we're going to use the UI automator viewer dot bat so if I run this this will run a UI automator application and that can be used to identify the controls within this particular emulator so if I search for the controls within this particular emulator test is nothing but this emulator not the visual studio emulator for android so it's obtaining the screenshots and you can see that our calculator application has come up here and if you hover to these particular controls and if you click it you can see that i can see the id property the class name property the package name the content description which is also called as accessibility ID and the indexes so all these different kinds of properties are actually coming in your UA automator viewer right we have already discussed about UA automator viewer in a greater detail in 
understanding Appium video series as well, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to identify these two text boxes using the ID property in this particular video of this video series. And in the next part, we'll discuss some other properties as well. So I'm just going to copy this ID and I'm going to flip to my Visual Studio that is available in my next desktop. So right here. And this is the same method which we worked in our last video. So here, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to type driver dot. And here you can see that there is something called find element. And there is something called find element by accessibility IDs, class name, CSS selector by ID. So this is what we are interested in. And we can pass the ID here. And you can return this element as an Android element or you can directly type the send keys here itself whichever you want you can do that so let me return this as a android element and let's type this as txt1 all right and then txt1 dot if you put send keys again it's pretty much the same thing so no difference so i'm going to type 20 and then I'm going to do pretty much the same thing. So I'm just going to copy paste it right here. And instead of txt1, I'm going to type txt2. And this is going to be edit number two. And how do I know this is edit number two? Because I already know that this is what is the property of this particular control. You can see it is edit number two, right? Awesome. So I just pasted that in as well. And now if we try to run this particular code, what I can do is I can just see how it works. So I'm going to save this code and I'm going to just run this particular method. And again, I have installed a resharper into my Visual Studio and that's why I can, you can see this kind of options. Else you can directly right click and you can run the test like this as well. All right, now it's running. And now the test should run in this particular emulator. All right. And you should type 20 and 30. Ooh, I think what we did is, hmm, we just typed as txt1 and that's the problem. So this should be txt2 and 20 and 50, whatever it is. So let's try to run this once again. So we need this RPM to stop the execution else this will keep on running. All right, so now maybe run test. All right, so now it's running. So it's going to type 20 and 50. Awesome. So it's working as expected, right? Great. So that's it guys. So with this way we can perform the operation with the controls of the application using ID property. So the next video of this video series, we discuss some other identification type to locate the elements within the Android applications control. So that's it guys. Thank you very much for watching this video and have a great day.